What up, everybody? It's Chris Rosco with Operation Moksha, and today we're talking about what integration actually means. Like, what does that word mean, and how does that apply to us, and how do we make that a practical term that means something that we can use in our day-to-day -day lives instead of some seemingly potentially esoteric or out-of-reach idea that doesn't mean anything. Because I use this word a lot because this is how I experience it. I actually experience different parts of my personality integrating into each other, like fucking Voltron or Megazord or Mega Man or some kind of other pop culture reference. And so I wanted to explain a little bit what that process actually looks like and why it's beneficial and why for me, I think it's the single most important uh, internal practice that you possibly can have. Right? Like, I'm a Reiki master. I probably talked about this before. And, you know, I've studied mindfulness a little bit and I've studied a lot of different religions and a lot of different practices. Um, you know, every religion you can probably think of and psychology and Western and Eastern philosophy. And I've just studied a lot of different shit to try and figure out the best way, so to speak, to, to live and to be and to pursue growth because I, I quite literally had to in order to save my life. Because, you know, not, not even that long ago, it was like, all right, dude, you either need to get your mind together or you're going to kill yourself. Like, that's it. So I, I studied everything I could to try and figure out um, how to get myself better. And, I, and I've been studying that shit since I was 12. And so this, this shadow integration thing is the most important and most beneficial thing I've ever learned. It's, it's the absolute rock and foundation of my entire practice and for the most part, my entire philosophy. Because the highest priority in my philosophy is, is authenticity. And, and authentic expression. But without this integration piece, you, you can't really ever hope to have that, not on a really sustainable and deep level. So that's two minutes of me talking about the concept. So what actually is integration and what does it really look like? So when you say integration, like you're quite literally integrating one part of your personality into another or into the rest. And a really good way of kind of bringing this home is by saying, you know, the, one of the most classic things I help my clients with is a lot of my clients think it's better to take care of other people than it is to take care of themselves. I think it's better to be selfless than it is to be selfish. And so their selfish parts, the part of them that would stand up for themselves, the part of themselves that would maintain autonomy, the part of themselves that would um, set boundaries and the part of themselves that would take space for themselves to heal and, and all that sort of stuff and do the adventures that they want to do and basically all their selfish shit gets thrown into their shadow, which is the part of your unconscious mind that houses all of the parts of your personality that you reject. If your identity is all the things that you say you are, your shadow is its direct opposite that holds all the things that you say you're not. So what shadow integration really is all about is it's holding a balance and integrating all of your opposites, right? It's And here's what I mean by integrating. So you have this selfless part of yourself that says I need to nurture everybody and care for everybody and think of everybody first and make sure that everybody's happy. And that's fine and great, but on its own, it's imbalanced because if you do that enough, you're going to kind of shrivel up and die over here and you're not going to get your needs met and it's going to look like everyone else is taking advantage of you. But the fact of the matter is, is like you're just not standing up for yourself. And so the way to do this is to integrate it. And the challenge that most people have is in thinking that it's bad to be selfish or that it's wrong to be selfish. And, you know, a lot of this happens with people that have these like inherent senses of guilt and all these sorts of things. But what they don't know is that you can integrate. A lot of people seem to think of it as a choice between like, oh, well, like once I start being selfish, then I'll just be a selfish person and that's all there is to it. And I want to be a good uh, altruistic and selfless person. They see it as a one-to-one -one, like uh, a one-to-one -one thing, like it's a binary, but it's actually when you integrate the two, it becomes bigger than the two and becomes bigger than a binary. So here's what I finally mean by integrate. So you've got the part of you that cares about other people and the part of you that cares about yourself, but this part's unintegrated. So you don't have this. And what it really looks like to integrate is to say, what would it be like to do both at the same time? How can I integrate these into a singular worldview where it's like, instead of only caring about other people and not caring about myself. And instead of switching to the opposite side and only caring about myself and other people, how can I do both? How can I integrate these into a worldview? <clears throat> how can I love other people while caring for myself? 
You know, how do I set up the boundaries for how much I can give other people without causing negative impacts and losing all my energy and, and you know, having my boundaries and stuff walked upon that that's going to mess with my sense of self-respect. It's going to mess with my sense of internal integrity and my ability to get what I want and accomplish my goals. Like, how can I help people in a way that doesn't hurt me? That's integration. And then vice versa, it's like, how can I stand up for myself in a way where I still feel like a good person who's still being kind and loving to other people and not being unnecessarily harsh and those types of things. These two seemingly opposing things actually counterbalance each other and they complement each other really well. And so that's what integration is really all about. Another way of thinking about it would be synthesis. You synthesize these two parts of your different personality and they become bigger than, I don't know if synthesize is the right word. Maybe it's not. I'm thinking synergy. Synergy. If, when you synergize these two parts of these personality, you synthesize them and then they become synergized. <laughs> and it's this idea that they're bigger and more complete and more whole and they're, they're bigger than they are on their own. And there's innumerable different ways that you can take a look at this. But the most common one and the most easy to explain for me is this split between self and other. Right, Because once they integrate, then suddenly you become someone who stands up for themselves in a way that is kind and loving and <clears throat> really kind of a beautiful example for the world. And you can also care for the world around you in the ways that are meaningful to you without losing your sense of self and without losing your self-respect self and your dignity and your own energy and your boundaries and all that sort of shit. So when you say integrate, you're quite literally taking two different things and combining them and creating something bigger than they were together. And you can tell if there's a part of your personality that needs to be integrated if you're experiencing an imbalance. And you can tell if you're experiencing an imbalance if you experience a, a consistent problem that stays even though you try to fix it. Which would be like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm so loving and so giving, but like I never get what I want. And people take advantage of me because I'm too nice or because I'm, you know, whatever. Or I only see the good in people, you know, so I don't, you know, see when people are trying to take advantage of me and blah, blah, blah. You can bet that's an imbalance because the part of you that would see the predators coming has been disowned and it's been disintegrated and it lives into your shadow. So when you can still see the good in people, but you can also see the bad in people as well so that you can have a really holistic view of the people that you're surrounding yourself with. You can say, oh, look at how beautiful and wonderful this person is. It's like, and I think they might have a high capacity, you know, to be like dishonest. Or they might have a high capacity to be someone that I don't trust with this or this or this. And then you can actually have your relationships make sense and trust people with the things that they truly show themselves to be trustworthy for and then not trust people on the things that they show themselves to be not trustworthy on. <clears throat> and this allows you to be loving and kind, but also still take care of your family and your friends and your community and be on lookout for you know, potential dangers and all sorts of things. So that's why integration is absolutely essential, mainly because of this split between uh, identity and shadow, because we really do look at it a lot of the times as if it's one or the other, right? Where it's like, oh, I need to be this thing I identify with, but if I become this thing, then it's like I'm the exact opposite of what I wanted to be, and that's horrible, and that's bad, and I can't live with that. But when you really accept integration as a thing that is really you know the end goal then you're like okay i don't have to pick between the two i get to have both i get to love myself and other people at the same time and that's really the goal so the main question at this point is how do you actually do that and so let's use the same example so you're a selfless person and you need to develop your selfishness the first thing to do in order to integrate your selfishness is to accept it in its current state and its current state might be dysfunctional as all hell. Like my selfishness, when I realized that I needed to integrate it, was so fed up with me not standing up with myself or for myself and so fed up of me not listening to it and so fed up of me not caring for it that it, was, it would have become this violent, angry, demonic thing that was threatening to destroy me and everyone that I cared about. And so at that point, it didn't look like something to integrate. It didn't look like a helpful thing that was going to make my life so much better if I just, you know, bring it into my life, you know? That's not what it looked like. I had to let it vent for a long time before its, its purpose and its inherent value became clear to me. And so I'm using the word venting very intentionally and specifically because if you've ever vented to someone who's a really, really, really good listener, 
someone who cares and like wants to help and really wants to understand what ends up happening. Nine times out of 10, you feel way better. You relax. You're able to think through your situation more calmly. And nine times out of 10, you can actually solve your own problem if you vent to a really good listener. And that's what we're talking about is you're letting what this part of yourself that whatever part it is, maybe you've on the other side and you've decided it's better to take care of yourself than it is other people, which is totally fine if you grew up in an abusive household because self-preservation is, is king and you need to, to have that. And so there's some circumstances where that's totally fine. And so you might need to look at the other one, the part of you that cares of other people. And if that's the case, it might look all fucked up. It might tell you that people are terrible and awful and blah, 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 blah. And you got to let that part of you vent until it can get all the shit out and then it can think clearly and then it can start to solve its own problems. And then once that happens, then you can really see the underlying value of the thing. And when I vented all the shit out and, you know, this really horrible demonic part of myself got all its anger and its rage and its disappointment and its sadness and its grief out. And I was like, oh, all you want to do is make sure I'm taken care of. I can integrate that. It's like, okay, I can still care about people. I can still be the selfless, altruistic guy who lives in service with a sense of purpose. And I can integrate these concerns because these are valid concerns and they're authentic because they're part of me. There's a part of myself that already holds the blueprints for how I need to be taken care of and how I need to communicate and how I need to be communicated to and all those different things. It's like these different parts of our personality that we disown hold all the blueprints for whatever it is they're supposed to accomplish and they accomplish it incredibly well. Like these parts of our personality are really good at what they do. It's just a matter of us letting them clear out all the shit that's in the way so that we can figure out what they intended to do and we can help them do it in the best way possible. So that's what integration is. That's how to do it. That's why this is fucking important. Like integration is everything. And to me, it's way, it's the most important thing because it's what helps you become whole. You know, like I said, I study, I, I'm a Reiki master and Reiki master allow, or Reiki allows you to move energy out but it doesn't really allow you to have that intimate relationship with what that part of yourself is and why that energy was there in the first place and what that part of yourself is trying to communicate to you and how you can really integrate it. So like just doing Reiki or just doing meditation or just doing something else isn't enough if you don't understand what parts of your personality are being addressed and if you don't understand why they're saying what they're saying and what they're trying to accomplish and how you can integrate those concerns into your life to create a more balanced experience of living so this is absolutely essential fundamental shit and if you want to learn it i am taking clients right now i'm not likely to do another group course next month but i am taking private one-on-one -on -one, um uh clients right now and so if you're really serious about mastering this practice and you really want to transform your life and your relationship to yourself and, and have this aligned, authentic way of living to be the epicenter of your reality. Like if you're dead fucking serious about that, then hit me up and I will get on the phone with you for free and we'll talk about like what it is you're wanting, what your challenges are, and then we'll come up with a plan to help you get from point A to point B. Even if you don't sign up with me, I want you to have a plan for how you can conquer um, whatever your current challenges are so that you can get where you want to go. And if you're the type of person that knows for sure you're not in a financial position to afford a coach or any kind of support, you can reach out to me and let me know what you're struggling with, and I'll make videos for you. A huge reason I make these videos is so that the people that can't afford help, like I couldn't when I first started, I was super broke and I couldn't afford a therapist or a coach or mentor or anything like that, so I watched a lot of free content. And I want to make sure that my free content is specifically made for those of you who can't afford the support but still really need it. So you can ask me your questions, you can tell me what you're struggling with, and I will make videos specifically for you to help you deal with what you're dealing with. Um, and then maybe one day you get enough money to you know, afford my help, maybe one day you don't, but either way, I'm gonna be here for you and I wanna make sure that you're not left high and dry. And I'm also not the type of motherfucker to withhold in my free content so that you have to buy. It's like, no, I want this to be a legit manual that you can use to transform your life in whatever way you choose. So let me know if I can help. Let me know if there's anything you need from me or if you have any questions or anything like that. Um, I love you and I'll see you next time.